What is up? It is Wednesday night. It feels like it's the first time in forever. I am Lou Mangiello. If you're here, you are my friend. If you're watching live, thank you. Sit back. Relax. We have a lot to catch up on. If you're watching on the replay, please join us every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, almost every Wednesday. I missed a couple of Wednesdays. The time difference and the non-Wi-Fi in Japan made it a little bit uh, more difficult than I had hoped to go live when I wanted to. I've missed you so much, I had to eat all of my emotions for two weeks straight. They mostly came in the form of carbohydrates, like noodles and buns and uh, uh, okonomiyaki and meat and rice and green tea matcha ice cream. I was like a little fat Godzilla just sort of eating my way up and down Japan um, because I missed you so very much. Um, it was the only way I really had to, uh, to cope with everything. I love seeing... John Young, I have no idea what day or time it is um, at this point, but I'm so happy to see so many familiar names and faces and little Facebook icons in here. Um, I had to literally sort of dust off my seat as I got back into the chair uh, tonight. So good to see you, Jim, Joe, Father Christopher, uh, Carolyn, Jeremy Goff, uh, who I saw right before I left, Kenneth and Lisa, who I just saw hours ago, speaking of eating and eating all the feelings and the food. We ate the feelings and the food, uh, mostly the food. Uh, Chris, enjoy the post. Thank you very much to everybody who, um, sounds like my mic is not plugged in. Wait a minute. Let's, uh, hold on a second. Let's make sure. Well, that's why. Probably this will help. Better or worse? Better or worse? You see how long it's been? I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I need a little instruction manual. Um, I did. I missed you guys. Um, I, I missed all of this um, and, and seeing you guys. Magic Garden Roll Call. Laura Sleeper. I dig the reference to the WPIX. Um, what was her, her names? Was Julie and God? I can see him with the pigtails and the puppets and the Magic Garden. Anyway, I'm um, I'm getting all kinds of. Now we have we have music. Sounds much better. Yeah, sorry about that. The voice not in sync. I'm like Millie Vanilli. I'm I'm lip syncing the entire thing. I have somebody else doing this for me. BJ, dude, how much fun and food and fat did we have in Japan for, it seems like more than two weeks. And in some respects, it seems like more than two weeks ago since, uh, since we're there. Meg and BJ were with us in China two years ago and back in Japan. I think we had more fun this time. I don't know if that was possible. And by fun, I mean your wife and I really sort of did damage and just dragged you along for the ride in terms of all of the foods. Jennings Smith is in Grand Cayman. Uh, dude, if you're there on vacation, why are you watching us instead of just chilling in Grand Cayman? And, well, even if not, thank you for watching. Uh, Mark Thompson wants to know if my Michael Jackson jacket is ready for Halloween, which I cannot believe is tomorrow. I am woefully unprepared other than preparing gastronomically for all of the candy that I I actually, I think the candy should be more of an exchange. I think when kids come to the door, I think it should be a negotiation. Like, all right, I've got Japanese Kit Kats. What do you got? Show me the Snickers, man. Give me some, <clears throat> excuse me, dark chocolate m ms Let's really, because I think it also teaches kids entrepreneurship, bargaining, um, no, like, you know, there's lots of valuable lessons, but it's a win-win for everybody. Instead of just giving candy, I'd like to get some too, because just trying to steal it from kids as I'm walking through the neighborhood is not is not cool. Meg Nodson also here ate so much. I was thinking today, um, which I don't do very often, but I was thinking today we were in was it Kyoto, which was my favorite part of the trip, walking um, up and down, up and down, and up and down. <clears throat> that little marketplace and we stopped and got the red bean a uh, little like um thing we weren't supposed to stop for food we were supposed to go on our destination we stopped for red bean on the way there we got green tea ice cream on the way back the little buns the green tea oh gosh i could just um i could 
bore you to tears with the with the photos that I had and videos I took. Thank you for everybody, everybody who followed along as I was um, desperately and exhaustedly exhaustedly. I'm just if it's a word, who cares? Exhaustedly uh, um, at night going back to my room because the days were long and I did more walking in those two weeks than I think I've done the past two years. But I wanted to share as much as possible. And obviously, we'll do a full recap of. Um, 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 red bean maple. That's what it was. Oh my god, it was so good, and it was warm. Oh, and it was a nice treat. Uh, Carlos, I dude, where are you? you're like in Portugal, something. You're speaking of traveling the world. Martin Shergold, my friend, Brill. Did the time we have not just sort of exceed all the expectations? Um, so much fun and so much food and laughter. A little bit of sore throats, some coughing. It was like a TB ward in the bus, but who cared? Um, Meg says we broke a lot of ABD rules to obtain street food. We did. Um, I th- I think those rules were more like guidelines, so we were just sort of making it up as we went along. Um, I think James had to sort of try and wrangle. There's actually a photo of us eating our red bean maple things, and if you look in the background, there's James looking at us, not very pleased with what our uh, our our choices were. Father Christopher. They're not, they weren't actually full blown sins. They were more of slight, they were like venial sins, not more little, like they said, just don't go shopping while we're going up the street to our destination. But Meg and I were in the back. We were like little, like ninjas, literally like ninjas, food ninjas, shooting in and out of stalls to grab food because I think it was really in everyone's best interest that we stayed not only carb loaded, but had enough sugar for what was going to be a long, somewhat treacherous hike up whatever miniature mountain was in front of us. So again, I'm able to justify uh, everything. Mark, I didn't get a Gelatoni Duffy plush. The last time I was there, I got them for my kids. Um, I did have, I believe the count was six different flavors of popcorn. I had the, um, it's no longer a chandu tail. It's more of a chandu bun, which was delicious. Uh, we had the the beef cone thing. We had lots of food in Tokyo, too. I was eating, Meg is a bad, you know what? Meg was a bad influence in the best possible way, eating so much food after breakfast, but before lunch as we uh, munched our way through Adventureland. So uh, Food Ninja, is that my costume tomorrow no, but I think it could be, and it should be. Um, I just need to wear black stretchy pants. Walmart, here I come. I'm just going to go in all black and put a little, um, put like one of those little Karate Kid bandanas on my head, and I am going as the food ninja. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm going out tomorrow. I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to give out candy, and we might go a little bit, a couple of houses around here. Dan, I only made it to to six flavors. I did have the first thing I ate when I got to Tokyo Disney Sea uh, was Chinese chili popcorn for breakfast. That was about 9:07 a.m. and it was gone by about 9:09 a.m. and that was just sort of opening the floodgates of all the tasty foods and beverages in uh, Tokyo Disney Sea. Christina Ritz, nice to see you as well. Uh, would I rather deal with earthquake, fires, hurricanes, or floods? Edward, in a perfect world, I'd choose none of the above. Um, but fortunately, we did um, we did okay in terms of the typhoon. It didn't really influence impact us too much. We got there a day late. Although, we got there a day late, and it took me, no joke, about 40 hours like straight of non-sleeping travel to get back. Um, There was a a really bad storm on the way back. Flights were delayed, all kinds of chaos, but it was fine. So uh, do I prefer coffee or matcha? So, uh, Darren, I'm a a Dunkin' Donuts coffee guy, but I prefer tea. Um, And I actually bought some, again, I think with Meg, but really nice um, matcha and I don't know why it was so expensive, but I was like, it has to be good, so let's just buy this one. Bought matcha powder um, while we were there. So, broke out the mighty Ginsu knives, oh, mighty food ninja. I am. I'm like, uh, God, who was the guy from the, 
the Ginsu Knife commercial back in like the 80s, something like that. Colin Kendall, it's good to see you as well. Matt Shane, is there a Disney park I have yet to visit? I still have not done Paris yet, although that's coming very, very soon um, as we make preparations for what is going to be a WW Radio on the road event in London, Paris. It's part of the reason why I'm staying longer next week when I go to London. Um, I will have been back for only about seven or eight days when I hit the road again to London. London on Thursday, I believe. I don't know. I'm still working on my um, on my slides. But wait, that actually reminds me because we finally have a place and a time selected for our London on the road meet. If you're going to be, if you happen to be in London, um, it's going to be next Wednesday, the 13th. At 2 to 4 p.m. London time at the Feathers Pub, um, whatever 18-20 Broadway is in London, it's near the Conrad St. James Hotel where I'm going to be staying. Um, I made a reservation for 30, so I have no idea what to expect, although the fact that it is a pub, so that's where we're going, and we will just sort of play it by ear. Um, What is matcha? Matcha is... um, uh, the easiest way to explain it is a sort of a green tea powder that could be used to make tea. It's also something that you can put on, like, they put it on ice cream, and they put it on toast, and they put it on all these different things. So I bought a can of expensive and what I have to assume is delicious matcha powder, and I'm just going to go to town and um, and figure out what I could put it on other than just tea. Um, the ice cream thing is intriguing to me. So I'm going to, uh, I will check it out. Eric, Eric Sanchez of ours, it's good to see you and your family again. Uh, popcorn for breakfast, it's a thing. Um, the other thing that's a thing is ridiculously long lines for popcorn and the, and the associated popcorn buckets, which the Japanese, huge fans of. Um, I actually did stand on a very long line, not just for the, the tasty popcorn treat, but for the tangled light up popcorn buckets uh, by request. So, uh, Paul Hoffman, good to see you as well. Dan Kelly says Disneyland Paris is awesome. Uh, I've heard really nice things about here. The castle and the dragon is spectacular. So, we will see. Um, I'm not going to make it this trip. We I, I thought about staying a couple days longer and shooting across to go. Um, but I'm actually going to be coming back because I have another trip which came up came up um, uh, very recently that I will share. Um, I'm going somewhere else that I'm going to bring to you not just live but through mostly, I think, Instagram video and stories uh, because I want to try and bring it to you in sort of bite-sized nuggets and bite-sized is, is a intentional term. Uh, bite-sized nuggets um, from where I'm going. I'm going solo and uh, to do something that I have done before, but not necessarily at this time of year. So I will I will share more details as we get closer. Uh, Amy Keys, good to see you again. Um, and it's funny, Amy, you actually crossed my mind because something that you posted popped up on Facebook, and it reminded me of this. These are your uh, these are the postcards, the follow-up postcards that are going out. Soon, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth was actually closed at Tokyo Disney Sea. Although I did get to ride uh, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea for the first time, which I loved. Um, so, again, full review. Um, I feel this is going to be a lengthy podcast because it was a lengthy trip, and we tacked on Disneyland and Disney Sea on the back end as well. Uh, Amanda Bonner heard, heard the word solo, and her ears perked up. Amanda Bonner is from Disney Travel for All. Look, Amanda, wait a second. Hold it. Look, I even have, wait, wait, look. Oh, no, I so, I'm so bad at this. Wait, that that's what I had. She's from DisneyTravelForAll.com, and she actually specializes in traveling solo and sharing tips on how to do it well. See that? I didn't even know you were going to be there, and I had it at the ready for you, so... Um, I actually like traveling solo too. Actually, some of the, my favorite times when I was in Japan was um, there wasn't one thing about the Adventures by Disney. There's not a ton of free time, but I took advantage of it um, 
in terms of just going off and, and doing a few things on my own. One of my favorite meals that I had on the entire trip, I had by myself. Just I wandered aimlessly, found a side street, did not feel unsafe at all. And there was a tiny little, it was probably about the size, if not smaller than my office, a place that had nothing but uh, pork and shrimp katsudan, and it was awesome. There was me and one other little Japanese businessman dude in there, and then he left, and I had the place to myself, and it was like nine bucks or 80 billion yen. I have no idea. It was delicious, and I just had such a wonderful time um, wandering my way through the streets of uh, Tokyo um, that night. But yeah, I don't want to spe- I don't want to share too much about the trip because I want to save some of the stuff for the podcast. Um, Pamela Frost loves to wander around with the camera, just shoot away. That's what I did a lot of in um, in Japan. I think my as I sort of was paring down my photos to put them in. Um, a folder or an album on my phone. I think I pared it down to about a thousand photos, which is a lot. Um, I need to sort of nobody. I'm going to be like the old guy who's like, "Come on, everybody, let's gather around." I got slides. Here's me. Yeah, here's here's me walking up the mountain. Here's me eating my ice cream. Here's me eating my pork. Here's my. Eat. I need to sort of. Um, I need to go down, but I will tell you that. I've been to Japan, and before I even left, I was planning my return trip. Um, without a doubt, it's something I'm going to do again, um, hopefully within the next year. That's how much I loved it. I was told by, um, I was told by friends. I don't know if she's in here. Um, that the place that I would probably love was Kyoto, and she was not wrong. Um, I fell in love. With the town of Kyoto, the city of Kyoto, um, some of the the um, uh, associated um, small villages, and just every single thing about it. Um, Chris Anderson would love a slide. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, wait. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll do, after I do the podcast, we'll do like a virtual slideshow like going through the photos rather than me uploading a gazillion photos. I can sort of walk you through my little adventure by Disney adventure on like a live broadcast. Maybe I should do it for the nation. I don't know if I'm, that's a rhetorical question or I'm just talking out to myself. If anybody's interested in that, let me know. Maybe I'll do it. Um, uh, Jeffrey, did I eat any sushi? So, Jeffrey, believe it or not, I didn't have as much sushi as I had expected. I had it really twice. Um, when we went to this very, very small town called Takayama, the hotel, which was super cool yet super weird. It was, like, locked in the 70s. However, the buffet had – there was a dude making fresh sushi right there. I'm like, brother, I'm not moving till you load up my tray which is sort of what I said in my most broken Japanese, and they had a tempura station where the dude was frying up fresh and tempura. They lost money on me that night. There was a little, they'll notice when they go back and they check their P&L, there'll be this huge dip, and that's when Lou Mangello showed up. And the only other time I had it was my last night in Tokyo. Again, I went off um, on my own, and just outside of Tokyo Disneyland, Disney Sea, actually accessible by their monorail, um, it's called uh, Expari, and there was a very small Edo-style sushi restaurant where you go and just order by the piece. Um, again, the only non-Japanese person there. Solo trip had the best time and some of the best sushi that I had as well. So lots of good stuff. Um, people also, oh, some people say that they would like to see the... You're, you're down with the pictures. Chloe says, Kyoto is my favorite city in Japan. Mine too. I love Kyoto a lot. Uh, actually, I just noticed Lisa Noto Glasner is here. She is the one. She lived in Japan uh, and taught in Japan for a year and said before my trip, she's like, dude, you're going to love Kyoto. I thought she was crazy because she's crazy, but this time she happened to be right. Like, it, if you say enough things, I guess eventually you're right. And she was. And Kyoto was just remarkable. Um, everything about it. 
the the people, the cleanliness. The, the cleanliness. Uh, I, I said it half jokingly, but it's kind of true. If Disney ran a country, it would be Japan um, in terms of the service and the culture and a lot of what I, I learned about how and why the culture is the way it is from from what they teach kids at a young age, and I'll talk more about it on the show. Um, I understand it. I, I get it. Um, and I can't wait to go back. I said after the first day, um, and as the first day was happening, I we were done, and I said, you know, if the trip ended today, I would have gotten my money's worth. I, I loved it that much. The The bamboo forest, the rickshaw ride, walking through Kyoto, the lunch that we have, seeing, like meeting some of the people um, was just... I did. I, I just had a huge smile on my face um, the entire time. So, Kevin, first of all, Kevin's Kalecki Lucy, a couple of things. You said my brave soul to wander off and, on, and eat by your lonesome. If in 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 uh, um, Camden, New Jersey, absolutely, I'd be a brave, crazy soul. In Japan, not at all. Kevin, I never felt unsafe at all, whether I was in the subway, on the street, in a restaurant, I never once felt uncomfortable. I never grabbed my wallet. I never sort of, you know, held my bag tighter. No matter how crowded it was, no matter where I was or who I was with or not with, I never felt unsafe. The other thing is I've got to, like, pause for a second. Please, 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 either check the Box People group, check my Instagram stories, because Kevin and Nicholas, it's collectively loose, say, dudes, I don't. Brains falling out of my head. You think trunk or treat for Halloween? What do you think? You need, like, you've got your 86 Honda, like, your Toyota Celica in the parking lot and bags of Walmart candy. I say nay nay. You guys created, crafted, built, I don't know how you did it. You built a Tower of Terror lobby in the parking lot of some municipal parking lot somewhere where you live, that is the craziest, coolest, most impressive thing I have ever seen. I tried sharing it anywhere and everywhere that I could, on the Insta, on the Twitters, on the Facebooks, like, bravo to the both of you. I don't know how you pulled that off, but next time we get together, uh, I need to hear it. It must have taken you exorbitant amounts of time and money and patience and engineering and craftsmanship I love Halloween. I love, 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 love what you guys did. Please come decorate my house next year. This is really all I'm asking. So um, Mark says that trunk treat setup was the most awesome thing I've ever seen in a long time. That's the most impressive Halloween decoration setup um, I have ever seen. And I'm not just saying it because you're here. I don't mean just like people's houses, trunk or treats, like light displays, with the projection and the thing and the music and the antiques. It was nuts, man. It was nuts. Um, imagine when you get the bus. <gasps> yeah. So it was, uh, it was crazy. So I, I, I had to call you guys out uh, in the best possible way because that was incredibly impressive. Like I'm trying to like, who am I going to, who can I talk to, to show this to? Because, this needs to get out to as many people as possible. So, um, uh, yeah, wow, you guys win Halloween forever. So, uh, it's all about giving the kids a good time, man. I don't. Wow. There you go. So, anywho, um, let's see. Maureen says thanks for sharing the photos. Great to have the opportunity to share the adventures remotely. That's the whole idea. Um, I really try and toe the fine line between, I never wanted to feel like, ha ha, look at me, look where I am. That's not what it is at all. It's, it's, it, it, it gives me pleasure to be able to show it to you to either encourage you to hopefully go there someday, or if you can't bring the experience to you as much as possible. That's why I like doing the live stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, as much as I can. So, um, oh, the Fushimi Shrine, Martin. Excuse me. There were so many things that we saw that were just breathtakingly beautiful. 
um, uh, when we were doing the, the when they were going through the recap photos and video, I was like, oh my gosh, I almost forgot because we saw so much in such a relatively short period of time. I mean, Martin, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Was was Kyoto your favorite part of the trip as well? Um, I think it, without a doubt, was for me that first day, man. Uh, that bamboo forest and everybody was so nice and food was so good. I missed that matcha ice cream was phenomenal. And I'm not an ice cream guy. I wasn't an ice cream guy, but now I'm an ice cream guy. So, um, yeah, William, uh, Halloween is a relatively new thing in Japan, but the Japanese dig their Halloween and man, boy, do they do it well at, uh, at Tokyo Disneyland. Um, Oh, the Nara deer, they're so sweet, like, and just everywhere, um, literally eating out of my hands. Martin says, yes, the first day was um, was heaven. And I said, this first day is going to be tough to beat, and it was. Um, it absolutely was, but I think the way that they bookended it um, was was phenomenal. We'll talk, obviously, more about it on, um, uh, on the show when we do the recap, so... Maureen says, great photos, felt like we were there with the group. Um, That was the absolute, the intent of sharing the photos and the video with you guys. Um, The three Asia parks are in our daughter's sights for her high school graduation in six years. So, Eric, I would absolutely do it. If you have a a selected order of preference, uh, I would do Hong Kong, then Shanghai, and then Tokyo. I think you need to build up to what um, Tokyo Disney Sea has to offer so um william i did not get a chance to play pachinko again i wish i would have liked to have had a little bit more free time um and that's why when i go back um i'll probably do it differently because this was uh, very much a reconnaissance mission for me what are the venture by disney trips have we done uh so amy i have done whoops whoops stop it i have done two backstage magics to disneyland henson studios Hollywood, etc. Um, the trip that we did, oh, actually, you know what? The, the trip that we did to San Francisco was not an ABD. I did China last year and did um, Japan this year. We are planning another Adventures by Disney, which is going to be a domestic one. I will tell you that based on what I have seen them do on international trips, I, I can't wait to see part of America that, and I've seen a lot. We traveled by car a lot as a kid, but seeing a part of America that I loved and and saw <clears throat> nearly forty years ago, um, that we, we're going to announce relatively soon. It's going to be a family friendly trip, so you'll be able to bring your kids because it's domestic. It's it's obviously a much more accessible price point, but I can tell you that um, having taken other tour groups, traveled solo, there is nothing like an Adventures by Disney tour um, in terms of the level of service and accommodations and everything else that goes along with it. But again, I'll save it for the uh, the show. Martin says, we walked so much. I think I've not put on any weight, even with all the food we had. Um, oh, no, Martin, I'm fat. I'm huge. They literally, like, the security pulled me to the side at custom and said, Mr. Mundell, you're coming back a lot heavier than you were. They were, like, patting me down to make sure I didn't have anything taped to me. That's how much weight I've gained between then and now. But it was, uh, it was, it was absolutely worth it. Any chance of a trip to Norway? There is a chance to a trip to Norway. Uh, Beatrice, wish, would, wish you were there as well. Kent says, I shared some of the photos with a coworker today. What? Got in Japan conversation. He had some questions and said, "Oh, uh, Kent, thank you very much." Um, and yeah, I mean, I took a ton of other um, photos that didn't even make it as well. Probably not an ABD to New Jersey, um, although there is a potential Northeast trip planned at some other point. But I'll I'll get to that at a at a later time. Eric says, "Did they give you a sumo application?" Now that's just mean and hurtful. Um, again, I was eating many of my emotions while I was there, and they just happened to be in the form of carbohydrates. So, Vicky Guppy, who was also there, how how much fun did we have in Takayama? Mm. The antique store and the lunch place. Oh my gosh, so nice! And tea. We had lovely afternoon green tea. 
oh god um Kelly Fennell uh, or Fennell, uh, Italy. So we're just waiting for confirmation from Disney, and then we will announce the exact date. Um, Becky's not here, so I think I can sort of hint to let you know that it's going to be in the spring of 21, so you'll have time to save. If you are interested and haven't already let me know through the um, – um, I think I posted – somewhere but shoot me an email and let me know that you want to be on the interest list and and we'll make sure we let you know um so wait a minute i think i just saw somebody's name hold on a second i want to make sure i get it right is jared is there a jared mccarty in here wait uh jared did i just see your name or am i dreaming mccarty yes frank kaz what's going on man um matthew did i buy the spider-man so um, I only bought myself two things in Japan because my trip to Japan was my trip. And there was this cool little, like, wooden Spider-Man, like, carved guy that I saw in a shop. And when we were in Shiri, Shirakawa, Shiri, wait, I always get it wrong. Shirakawa go, whatever. There's this, there's this little character that not a character there's a there's a figure that they have that's good luck but martin and i found one that's a spider-man guy so and he's like a little jingly he goes like on your phone or something so those are the only two things that i bought myself in japan the other 85 pounds of stuff that i brought back was um were, were gifts for other people so uh quick pick godzilla or uh gamera my son would say godzilla um, <clears throat> excuse me. So David Potts, Egypt is is going to be one that's going to be now that they're now that ABD is going back to Egypt. It is one that I've wanted to go to for uh, a long, long time. That's probably going to be a couple of years down the road because it's probably going to be something like this in terms of time and cost and and saving up for it. Uh, actually, there was somebody on our in our group that was going on the Egypt ABD, he really wanted me to go with them. He's like, why don't you come with us, ne I think, next October? But I'm going to wait to hear how their experience was before I commit to doing one as a group. But I I need to go and see and, and put my hand on a pyramid. The same way I felt like I needed to see and put my hand on the Great Wall of China, I need to put my hand on a pyramid, and then I need to go, and when we go to Italy, I need to go and... and put my hand on like the Vatican. So once I have, <coughs> excuse me, once I have that um, trifecta done, I'll be ready to go. Uh, Meg, we could eat our way through Egypt too. How much fun would that be? Dahlia says I can translate. Oh, so we need to bring Dahlia and Meg with us and BJ. An Egypt ABD. So Terry Gaff was there. Terry and Susie Gaff. Uh, like, I love you guys so much. I appreciate you guys being there. Um, we Again, we too, we shared a couple of really nice meals while we, while we were in Japan. Um, how many days were we actually in Disney parks on this trip? So Kent, Disney is actually not part of the Adventures by Disney. Um, there's reasons why they don't normally do it. But thanks to our friends, and she's not even here to hear me say it, but thanks to our friends at Mouse Fan Travel, we were able to customize this Adventures by Disney and had an optional couple of days. I mean, we spent three days. I spent two and a half, really, days in Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea. Some people spent four, maybe five days in Tokyo Disneyland when they were done. So, um, yeah, a lot of people seem like they would be down for Egypt. Um, yeah, I, I like, I need to... It's one of the places I, I – Egypt – so the Great Wall um, was a place I didn't realize I needed to go. The Vatican I, I have for, for personal reasons just need to go to. Um, I would also like to go to um, like places like Chichen Itza, Machu Picchu, um, some of the – you know, we'll call it the ancient aliens sites around the, uh, around the world, but – uh, Egypt is is very very high on the list of places, and and for years, ABD pulled 
the trips. Um, it just was not, you know, the safest time or place to go. Um, what kind of sushi did I end up making? Amber Bramble. So to be clear, um, the photos that you may or may not have seen with me and four plates of sushi, I did not make all four. Uh, Her Majesty, um, who chose not to show up tonight, Her Majesty made her own set and didn't eat it. She had a roast beef sandwich instead in Japan. Let that sink in. Fine. And two of our other friends, (coughs) excuse me, from Australia didn't eat theirs, so I had theirs too. So... Uh, Egypt is a major bucket list, one of the few places where I'd actually want the security of an ABD. And Lisa, that's that's absolutely what you get. It's that sense of um, security, uh, literal and figurative sense of security when you travel. That's why I took it to a place like China. That's why, for the first time, I took it to a place like Japan and, and most certainly for something that I would want to do for um, Egypt. Uh, Kimberly says the Vatican's been on her list. One of the reasons why you do an ABD to someplace like Italy is because you do get exclusive access to places like the Vatican before it opens up and gets incredibly crowded. You get to go in with your group of 30 or 32 and have the place to yourself for a half hour, an hour, whatever it might be. So um, Colin says Egypt kind of scares me. And I think that's why, Colin, they waited until this year, until Disney felt comfortable enough to um for the security of guests which is obviously um paramount what are the tour guides like matthew we'll get into this when we do the recap of the show but you have a a normally you have two disney guides with you as well as local guides some that are with you for a couple of days some are for individual locations our guides were amazing uh james has been a cast member at walt disney world and for years as well as Tomomi both are from Japan um she opened i think she said she opened the Japan pavilion she was also in guest relations she was outstanding um, um and they <clears throat> they're able to sort of i want to say this the right way without giving the they sort of wrap you in that Disney type experience and that level the service that they that they afford you, the the um, you feel like they're friends. Like from the first day that you get there, uh, we'll talk more about it on the show. But <laughs> explain what the small incline hill was like. Yeah, maybe they don't describe the hills exactly appropriately. There was something lost in translation. The slight incline in the rain going up that mountainous hill. I mocked Becky for taking the bus, but she was the smartest one out of all of us. Um, uh, and Jason Knapp, India, without a doubt, is also some place that I would like to go and visit, um, not just for the food. <clears throat> Tikka Masala. Too soon? Never. Oh, so good. We could go there tonight. It's open late. Yay! Um, we did a uh, we did a live dining review today, which I'm going to try and get out tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to happen. I might, end up have, I might have to wait till um, the weekend. So what would I add to Japan? This is an interesting question. What would I add to Japan? based on <clears throat> your experience. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think that the um I think the Shinto shrines and the Buddhist temples are beautiful. And when you go there and you learn about the symbolism and the significance of everything that you see and makes you understand excuse me and appreciate them more, we actually got a chance to um sit in on a, a um, I don't want to call it a mass, but it, it was a Shinto service, um, which was beautiful. I, we didn't understand a word they were saying. It didn't really matter. Just to sort of see the differences in the cultures and the religions was, was fascinating to me. I'm still full, so full. I'm still stuffed. You're amateurs. You're amateurs, and I'm a little disappointed, although I may or may not have eaten I have not eaten dinner yet. Um, uh, Meg says, we got up the hill one way or the other. Uh, Yes, and I appreciate all of your hands and your help. (coughs) Excuse me. So I will tell you, um, a teaser for the next show. We had a meal today 
that I was not expecting to enjoy as much as I did. I thought it was going to be nice. I thought it was going to be, you know, a um, it, it it's a, a serviceable like place to go if you. I did not expect to love it as much as I did. I was not expect to be surprised by the variety of the menu as much as I did. The quality of the service. So good. So good. How surprising was what for most of us came out to be our favorite thing on the menu. Not expecting it at all. So uh, what did I miss most? The boathouse or the bread service? So I'll say I can't. Well, I will tell you that when we went to. um, Oh, God, I'm going to say it wrong. No, I won't say it wrong because I'll tell you exactly what it's called. When we went to, I want to say Mayakama. Mayakama Island. Um, uh, Miyajima. When we went to Miyajima Island, um, they're famous for their oysters. And so me and Becky and the Gaffs, we found a little place in the in the in the marketplace. Um, I had raw oysters and soba noodles, and the Gaffs had oysters three ways. They were so good it reminded me of boathouse they were actually huge the oysters were like that big they were monstrous um <coughs> the western oh, <laughs> oh my god meg <laughs> there we will tell the story of the um of our seaside lunch and uh and just it was it was a unique dining experience and i will i will leave it at that so um, <laughs> so, uh, Kira, the, I, I will tell you, it's not a place I would have, ex- I, I've eaten there before. Um, I've eaten at every single restaurant in Walt, every dining location at Walt Disney World I've eaten at, except, except the Italian restaurant Mangino's at Shades of Green. It's the only one I have left on the list, um, to do. Um, Veronica, I, I did get a little sick, um, while we were there, because we were on the bus as well as the, the, the bullet train, which is awesome, by the way, spotless. Um, but on the bus, there was a couple of people who were sick, and it was like a TB warden air. You could almost see the germs, like, floating overhead. Like when Willy Wonka, like, shrinks the chocolate bar and Mike TV and the chocolate bar are floating overhead. That's what all the germs looked like. And um, it was just sort of – it just sort of made its way through the bus. But I um, – uh, I avoided it as much as possible. I just need to get better for next week because I'm speaking. Terry Gaff says the oysters were great all three ways. That was one of my favorite days, man. Like um, in terms of meals and that little shopping street, I liked that a lot. Um, that was that was a that was a nice time. I don't remember the order of things, but that was one of my favorite. Um, that was one of my favorite meals. So, um, Kelly says, Kaiju oysters, Godzilla eats. My son's a big Godzilla fan. So, Scott Otis, Chandu, right there. This is the one you brought me from Tokyo years again. See, I have it. Um, Martin, I wasn't pointing the finger at you, but it was all Martin's fault. No, I'm only kidding. But I think you might have been patient zero, but it's fine. Um, so, Chloe, we did go to the major crossing street in uh, Tokyo, which is called, um, it's called, wait a minute, now I have to look it up. It is called, oh gosh, it was called, uh, oh my gosh, what's it called? Wait a minute. I don't remember. The really busy street in Tokyo. We did. We went there. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> I was charcoal charcoal capsules on foreign trips. Hmm. Scott, I will tell you that I did have, and I won't sing it because I don't sing. Um, I did have the song from Sinbad's Magical Voyage stuck in my head. It's like the Japanese version of It's a Small World, because once you hear it, it's it's stuck in there. So Terry Gaff, 
I went on my son being the huge Godzilla fan. I went uh, and I sought out the Godzilla statue twice uh, to take pictures for him during the day and at night. And because I couldn't get across town because of the emperor's coronation ceremony, um, they fortunately they had some Godzilla stuff in there. So I was able to bring some stuff back for him. Shibuya crossing. That's it. Thank you. That was a crazy, that was a crazy night. I like, we were taking our group pictures, like that one dude just sort of like literally like latched on to me and was like, hey man, what's up? I'm like, all right, peace, brother. Um, did I ever talk to the lady behind you on the outbound flight? Uh, no, but she probably thought I was a lunatic because I took that same picture like six times. But, <coughs> excuse me, that flight seems like it was weeks, well, I guess it was weeks ago. But it seems um, it, it seems like it was eons ago. So my flight's back, not as good as my flight's going out. My flight back was delayed. And then instead of going, they decided for some reason, instead of going right to Atlanta from Tokyo, they're like, we're going to stop in Seattle. You can't get off the plane and get a direct flight from Seattle to Orlando because that would make too much sense. You got to just sit on the plane for two hours and then it'll take off again. And then when you get to Atlanta, you got to wait on that really long line there at two o'clock in the morning. And then we're going to run out of hotels. So you have to sleep at the airport to get your flight the next morning. Oh, by the way, please do me a favor. Lug all four of your very heavy bags throughout the airport because we're not going to tell you that you could have checked them in when you got off the plane. It's fine. It was wonderful. It was It was wonderful. So... Uh, any tips for surviving trans-Pacific long flights? Um, aisle seats, um, if you can do Comfort Plus, every little bit helps. Uh, I mean, listen, I don't roll like Becky does, so I don't get the pod up front. If you haven't seen the videos, please go check it out. There she is in seat 1A, of course. Um, bring snacks. Everybody makes fun of me for bringing snacks. Who's laughing now? Flight back home, 11 pounds of snacks. King of the Island, man. Lord of the Flies. So, um, Martin didn't have to, he had to fly to China. And yeah, but you got to stop in Shanghai, which is not the worst layover in the world. So, um, so Mark, yeah, bring, um, I, I will tell you that I did invest and I found a really great pair for like $45 of noise canceling, like over ear cup headphones. They're really nice to sort of cut out the the background noise on a long flight. So, uh, oh, I I just brought my snacks downstairs. Bags, Ziploc bags full of snacks. Don't you mock, but it paid off in the end because when we were making that switch in Seattle, sharing snacks throughout the plane. So, um. The jet lag, I will tell you, it's, my body clock is still a little off. I'm still not quite regular, but I, what's going to happen by the time I get normalized with my sleep schedule, I leave for London, which is going to whack me out again, and then I leave again, and then I'm literally not, I'm not leaving the house in December. I like, put away all my pants, I'm not going anywhere, DoorDash, Uber Eats, I'm coming for you throughout the month of December, so... Uh, Drew, the best thing I got to eat, that's tough, man. Um, we went for okonomiyaki one night, um, which was outstanding. The 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 heat of beef was really, really good. Um, yeah, there was a lot of really good stuff. I have to sort of think back on our meals. The one meal that Becky didn't come to that night, Martin, uh, I don't remember where it was where we were um, cooking, again, it was the heat of beef, and that, and she didn't tow, so I ate hers. That was really good, too. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of really, we ate a lot of really, really good food. Some of the things we had, we just sort of found on our own. We found a um, a place for uh, the katsu don, uh, for poor katsu don, and... Um, you you sit on the um, tatami mats. Um, I, you know what? My favorite hotel was in Kyoto. It was the Hyatt in Kyoto. I will tell you, the Peninsula Hotel in Tokyo is 
it's not the four seasons. It's the five seasons. It's the Ritz Carlton of Ritz Carlton of high, very, very, very high end luxury hotels. Incredible serve, the best service I've ever had at a hotel. An amazing room. But I liked the the Hilton. It was the Hilton or Hyatt. It was the it was the Hyatt in Kyoto. Uh, that was my favorite hotel. That was the one that I liked. It was the perfect balance for me of, you know, a nice hotel. It was super clean in terms of, when I say clean, I don't mean um, dirty clean. I mean in, in terms of the lines and the decor and just very, very simple. I don't need a lot. I was traveling by myself. Um, everything about it was perfect from the amenities to the restaurant downstairs to um, the night we were there, they had the geisha performing like in the downstairs lobby. Um, it was lovely. Um, oh, the octopus Taiyaki was really good. I wish we had more time on that street. Meg, what, what town was that? Where were we again? Um, because they all sort of blend. Was that, was that Takayama? Uh, wait, I have to look on my little thing now. Uh, was it Takayama? Yeah, it might have been. Oh, the onsen. Look it up. Um, yeah, that's so, Chris, I think that was my favorite hotel. Um, the beef was to die for. So Martin, I never made it to the spot, the peninsula. Because <coughs> um, the one night that we had some free time, I was wandering Tokyo for hours trying to find a couple of specific gifts. Oh, the Osaka food market. God, thank God for Mega, because I don't remember. That was really, like, a lot of fun. <laughs> it's funny because we went to, when we first got there, again, they're like, put your blinders on. We're going to go to a shrine down this side street. I was sitting there going, we need to speed this thing up, and I just sort of slowly kind of backed away from the group, and four or five of us took off and began the dining experience. And then we divided and conquered. Um, we had vending machine ramen. It didn't come out of a vending machine, but you put your coins into a vending machine. You got your ticket, and you, we got our ramen and the rice balls and the the melon bread thing. Oh, that was so good! And we had right. We I forgot we had the um, the octopus. Everything was was so nice, so so nice. Oh, the street food was delicious. Um, I will say without sharing too much TMI, uh, Martin, the bathroom buttons. I, I feel you, brother. Um, everything about everything in Tokyo, everything in Japan is an experience, including the potty. So, um, yeah, that was it was amazing. Um, the bath buttons. They will just call any toilet with that many buttons is too much for me. David Potts, it's like a little, it's like this launching a space shuttle in that. I was afraid to hit some of the buttons because I didn't know what was going to happen. And I wasn't sure, whatever. But it was lovely. And yeah, now that I think about it, the Hyatt in Kyoto was my favorite. I even loved the bathroom and the shower. Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So, um, yeah, the Osaka food market was really, really good. That was nice. Remember the giant thing of French fries, like the 10 pounds of fries? Um, <laughs> Lou on the electronic Lou. Yeah, but now I come back and there's no buttons anywhere. I mean, there's like one button and it just does one thing. So, uh, Chloe, there was a lot of that, what does this button do? And then you sort of sit there like waiting and then like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like music starts to play and it was, uh, some of them were very, very complicated. And Google Translate does not always translate accurately. Let's just leave it at that. So um, I hope they sanitize. Mark, I will tell you, I, I'm a broken record, I know, but when I say that this country was spotless, I mean, everywhere. Granted, it's hard to find a napkin and a garbage can, but their system works, and we'll, we'll talk more about it. Um, Courtney, it's nice to see you. We were just talking about our adventures by Disney to Japan. Martin says the buttons on the toilet were like roulette. Yeah, you didn't sort of know because even the symbols didn't necessarily tell you where the water was going to do what, but they were very warm and toasty. It was lovely. So, um, 
Chris got through her, her Irish bronchitis. Oh, yeah, that does not sound good. That does not sound good. You know what's a cure for Irish bronchitis? Going to Japan. Um, yeah, a lot of things I, I really um, I really loved about this trip, including the people that we went with. Um, I have known Megan BJ. I've, I've known Martin. Um, I've known Vicky and her husband and, and Stephen and his wife and, and the Gaffs and a few other people that were there. And uh, it was just such a nice, nice group of people. Um, Meg says, now that I've stayed at the Peninsula Hotel, I can't stay anywhere else. BJ, I'm sorry. Uh, spa mode for the bath, a closet for my things, made espresso every morning. The the closet uh, the closet is really a bit of a misnomer because it really is sort of a walk in. You could fit you could fit like five bunk beds in the in the closet. Although I did love the laundry thing because you put your laundry in this little box and you hit the button and like two seconds later somebody comes up and they take it from the other side and then you come back later and it's in this cute little box all nice and wrapped up. Um, it that was very nice. I don't know how much it actually cost me to do my laundry. I didn't want to look because I was afraid. I probably could have bought new clothes for the price of the laundry, but that's okay. So <laughs> Martin says he, <laughs> he had to be ready to, to jump. Um, that's a visual I didn't need, but okay. Um, gosh, I wish we could go back. I wish we could go back. As as long of a trip as it was, and and, and part of me missed being home. Um, I can't wait to go back again. We were actually talking today about do we start in Kyoto and end in Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea, or do we do go the opposite way and start off in Tokyo Disneyland and then sort of end in a very very chill um, environment like Kyoto? I think I would start in Kyoto and then sort of build my way up. Um, best stack at Tokyo Disney, Courtney. That's um, that's a, a question which can spawn a, a great debate I, I will tell you the chandu curry chicken curry bun is still really really good and although the maple pumpkin churro that i stood online for because becky wouldn't um was also a nice surprise i'm gonna go i think i might go with the chandu bun possibly yeah, I might, I I might go because I love the the savory, squishy bunness of it, and I know that's not a word, and I don't care because that's how I describe it in my mind. Um, that was really nice. That was really nice. Um, maple pumpkin. Oh, maple pumpkin churro. That's what it was. Uh, sick or jack lagged? A little bit of both, but that's fine. The okay. The my favorite popcorn flavor. I will tell you, um, we had curry popcorn for breakfast the last morning I was there. That was really good. I really like the Chinese curry popcorn. And no, wait, wait, forget everything I just said. When I stumbled upon the garlic shrimp popcorn and my popcorn voucher, Meg, did, did they give you two buckets of popcorn? Because I bought the thing and they gave me vouchers and I gave Meg my last voucher Two, not one, but two. I was literally walking around Tokyo Disney Sea at night with two things of of garlic shrimp popcorn. I ate one as fast as I could so I could stick the other one in it so I didn't look like this big fat American eating two big things of popcorn, but I did, and I loved it, and I don't care because it was, uh, I mean, if it's corn and if it's a vegetable, then I have to assume there's some sort of health benefit to it. So... um. BJ, I didn't get a chance to have a little green mochi because Becky ate mine. She didn't even share one with me. It was a Christmas miracle. So good, right? Um, Martin says, I think it worked out well. We did it start in Shanghai. It's an even better place. Yeah, Shanghai Disneyland is nothing to um, nothing to sneeze at either. So, yeah, I don't know why. Maybe because of the size of the bucket, it counts as two... Um, two popcorn vouchers so um so dahlia tron is in shanghai i've done it a couple years ago love that i'm sure martin can speak um can martin speak to it i assume that martin 
wrote it. Um, looking forward to it, and they're actually making great progress here in um, in Walt Disney World. So, but yeah, I cannot wait to go back to. Um, I cannot wait to go back to Japan. Um, trying to figure out where else I would need to go that maybe I hadn't before. Spending a little bit more time in Kyoto and just going to some of the the smaller little towns, the quiet villages, uh, where every day is like the one before. Little town full of little people waking up to say, come on in, Mangello, we've got food. The courage to double fist popcorn buckets. <laughs> David Potts, you're the best, man. The courage to double fist popcorn buckets is why Lou Mangello is my hero. So... Um. Yeah, Martin Shergold, Pirates of the Caribbean. Man, there's nothing, there's nothing like that at all. So, uh, Jessica Alice, thank you for show. Thank you for for coming tonight. Have a good, um, have a good evening, uh, Courtney. I have not done Paris yet, and I'm not going to be able to go next week on my trip to London. I was debating shooting over, um, excuse me, just for a day on the um, on the channel, but because I have to get back and for some other reasons, um, I'm not going to go on, on my London trip. So I want to spend a couple of days in London getting a lay of the land. This way, when we do do, we do do? When we do our London, Paris, WW radio trip, which might not even be an adventure by Disney, but anyway, um, uh, I'll have a better idea of... of where I want to go. Donald Nicholson says it's 99 days to New Orleans. How'd that happen? Um, God, I'm excited for that trip. Uh, Julie Diley, so nice to see you. We have to eat soon. It's been like way too long since we've eaten together. Um, Scott Otis says Disneyland Paris is the most beautiful of all the Magic Kingdoms. Whoa, dude, that's that's like, that's a pretty big enchilada you're throwing out there because... Uh, I, there's a Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom that I really, really love, and Shanghai is pretty darn impressive too. So, I would like to see. Uh, I hear the castle is spectacular. So, um, Patrick, what's up, man? Good to see you. Uh, Martin says the last Disney park for me is Hong Kong. When, dude? I mean, you were right there. It was like right across the street from Shanghai. You should have just popped on over just so you could have walked in the gate and. Um, um, the castles. I hear the dragon is is um, is gorgeous. So, Julie, I'm going to London next week. I have another trip right after. So, sometime in December, we will make it happen. Shoot me an email or message, and and we'll uh, we'll set something up. Uh, we were just talking about the Japan adventures, and and um, it's it was the most incredible trip I've ever taken. Um, there were things I saw in China, the Great Wall of China and the Forbidden City uh, may have been the most spectacular man-made structures I have ever seen in my life. Um, those might be tough to top other than maybe to the pyramids of Giza, but Japan is without question. Kyoto, Japan may be my favorite place, um, like anywhere, um. I need to go back again. So, uh, Louis Ramos, good to see you as well. Uh, Chris Chapman, have a good night. Dolly Nolan wants to go on the next um, Japan trip. Vicky Guppy, yeah, so where was your favorite place? Like, of all the places we visited, where was your favorite? Was it Kyoto, Osaka, uh, Shirakawa Go, uh, Takayama, Tokyo? Um, Martin keeps waking up thinking, where am I? Yeah, it's that happened the other night. <clears throat> I woke up and it was pitch black and I thought I was in a hotel and I was like, what? Co I'm trying to remember, like, where was I? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm back in America and this is real life and there's no buffet waiting for me downstairs. Very, very sad morning. Very, very sad morning. But um, <laughs> Patrick says aliens built those all. Dude, I don't know how it is. a It is a miracle of mo of 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 mankind's um, uh, engineering and brilliance and dedication and lots of other things. But um, I've talked about in the past of, of just how um, 
um, awe-inspiring the Great Wall of China is. And to have been able to, to put my hand on it, um, I, I felt very blessed to be able to do that. So February is meet of the month, the first or second Saturday in February. So I will tell you this, brother, as I as I look towards February's calendar, February is going to be tricky because I, I'm actually going to answer that question for you right now. That can't happen because the first and second weekends I'm going to be in New Orleans, specifically on the New Orleans cruise. We leave the 6th, we come back the 14th. I, I really, really doubt. Um, yeah, you know what? February is going to be really tough. It might have to be the first weekend because I've got New Orleans cruise, then the weekend after my, um, yeah, I have a personal matter, and then I travel to San Diego to speak the weekend after. So um, springtime is, is oftentimes tough for me with, with speaking schedules. So I apologize, man, that I'm not going to be here. Kyoto says, Kyoto and Takayama, without a doubt. I wish Takayama wasn't so far to get to from Tokyo, but I'm from Kyoto, but it's worth it. Um, Close as the Great Wall will take your breath away, stepping on it, walking around, knowing that you're one of the seven wonders of the world. Just, um, um, you cannot articulate the scale and the scope and the magnitude of what that was and when it was built and the manpower and the engineering and the foresight and the 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 coordination of hundreds of thousands of individuals um to make it happen it is um it is an awe it is awe inspiring um and there's there's nothing there's nothing else like it um literally on the planet so uh, Christine Tilly Marley Marson, good to hear, good, good to see you as well. Scott Otis is true. Not all meets of the month have been on weekends. So, um, but yeah, that's February is a tough month for me. Uh, January is gonna be a tough month for me too. Yikes! Marathon weekend. I'm speaking at um, one, two, three, four times that month. In February, we've got New Orleans. Um, yeah. That's going to be, yeah, we'll see. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. So, um, Terry, I was there for karaoke for a few minutes. Um, I res- I had a call that I had to take and make, and I think there was an appropriate time for me to bow out quietly and gracefully because it could have gotten um, ugly for everybody in the room if I was <coughs> somehow encouraged or requested to sing. So, um but uh, Brett Bowen, yeah, I'll meet you in New Orleans in, yeah, man, 99 days. I can't believe it's uh, it's coming up that close. So Patrick's asking about May. I can't make you any promises, but I'll tell you May. May right now is not crazy. Not, um, not too crazy yet. That can change. Um, again, springtime for me is often a... Uh, a, a busier time in terms of in terms of speaking, so let me just quickly see here. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. So, um, February two thousand nine, meet of the month is on a Friday. Scott, the fact that you know that and can repeat that, and the fact that it was ten years ago, almost more than that. That's that's frightening on many many levels uh chloe i do not uh nor do you want to hear me do karaoke i can assure you i can assure you uh so carlos says when do the weekly shows return this week man i am i am so sorry and so stressed out about the fact that because of my travel schedule and then some scheduling issues with guests i was not able to get shows up for a couple weeks I'm back, baby. I've got a show in the can for this week. We're going to record a recap of um, Japan, hopefully in the next few days. I have to send that email out to try and get that coordinated. Um, the, the, yeah, my travel schedule, is it's not an excuse, but it is a, a reason. So um, I apologize, and I appreciate you hopefully staying subscribed and hung in. So, um 
yes, I missed you guys too. And there's lots of stuff that I want to do and talk about. And I'm really excited to share today's live dining review. It's a surprise. It is a surprise win. Um, huge win. Huge win. Like, we're talking maybe top X restaurants in Walt Disney World. And it's not what or where you think it is. Dare I say, probably not listed on a lot of people's list because I think it's overlooked. And for those of you who were there with me today, there's a little tiny part of me that wants to put pants on again and go back tonight. The bow buns were so good. Ay, Dios mío, I have so much work to do. I can't do it. Um... Martin, yeah, nobody wants to see me do karaoke, and there was way too many cell phones in there, and it's it's just not not a good idea. Uh, Sharon w- Rourke Walters, it's not the boathouse. It is not the boathouse. I did not. It is the restaurant that I went to today is a Walt Disney World restaurant. It is not the boathouse, um, and it was exceptional. It was exceptional. Jenny didn't even know there was a Tokyo Disney Sea until your trip. Something to new to learn about. We will um, we will talk more about. You know, we've done a, a review of Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea. We'll share more about it um, on this trip because obviously I, I learned more when I went. Um, but if you can and and you are if you've got your little jar downstairs or upstairs or next to your bed where you're saving your your pennies for a possible future trip, and maybe you're not sure where to go, Japan slash Tokyo Disneyland should, without a doubt, um, be on your list. Without a doubt, be on your list. So, um, not 20 questions. I'm not giving it away. I'm not looking at anybody's responses because I don't want to react one way or another. So, uh, Eddie, I will tell you, it is not Golden Corral. Which, from what I understand, is like Tim Foster's favorite restaurant. So, uh, there you go. But, um, let's talk Disney Plus. I need to know if Disney and Amazon are going to work out a deal. Uh, Oh, I mean, in terms of um, getting on a fire stick? I don't know. But Roku's, I mean, you can buy a Roku, I think, for like $19 now. Like, they're super, super inexpensive. And it has a really nice, clean interface, too. So, um yeah, I mean, you can grab a Roku for, for next to nothing. So uh, you should start getting a tattoo in each place you visit. You'll have a kick full arm sleeve in no time. I'm not really the tattoo guy. Um, I, I Plus, you can't go to an onsen if you have a tattoo. So um, I, I don't think that there's anything that other than maybe like a cross that I would put on my body permanently. So not yes, no, not even you, little Spider-Man. Um, oh wait, did I bring up my Spidey? I did actually, I made something Spider-Man on the trip, but we'll uh, we'll tell you about it. So, um, the Adventures by Disney staff, I cannot say enough good things about. Um, they really feel like friends, like from the day that you get there. Um, there's a reason why they go through such a a, a, a lengthy process to become ABD guides, um, they made the trip without a doubt. They, they made a trip without a doubt. So, um, But um, anyway, I don't want to give too much away about the trip because I do need to save some stuff for the review. And I also realize it's almost 9 o'clock and I haven't even finished my slides. Don't tell them that yet, but I haven't finished my slides for my presentation next week in London, which, by the way, in case you happen to be, if you just happen to be in London and really have nothing else to do, uh, wait, where is it? Oh, I just had it. Hold on a second. There it is. Um, So the London meet is going to be Wednesday, November 13th. Excuse me. Two weeks from tonight. I don't know what the time difference is. Martin, what time is 2 o'clock in the afternoon there? <clears throat> Excuse me, it's going to be at the Feathers Pub. I've never been there before. It looked nice online. <clears throat> they have space for us. It'll be from 2 to 4 p.m., so super excited to go to that. Um, so, oh, speaking of meetups, our meet of the... Whoops. 
that way. Our meet of the month, <coughs> excuse me, is going to be this Saturday, November 2nd. It's Wine and Dine Half Marathon Weekend, which for me is just an excuse to see friends and eat. It'll be Saturday <clears throat> from 2, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, 2 to 3.30 p.m. in Disney Springs in the waterside seating area across from Rainforest Cafe. So if you, whoops, if you want to know exactly, come on, Mongel, this, is this really the first time you've ever done this? <laughs> Wait, hold on. There you go. It's right there. Um, so here's Rainforest Cafe, Goofy's Candy Company. We we had a meet there, I think, maybe a year or so ago, or maybe even earlier this year. Um, so hopefully the weather will hold out. There's tables. There's food nearby. So that's where the meet of the month will be. Oops. Come on, Lewis. There you go. This Saturday, November 2nd. And again, you can find out more about either or both of these on the uh, WW Radio events page. And I think t- I link to them also in the Box People group. And if you're not a member of the Box People group, please, 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 please join the group. Invite a friend. So, um, David Potts, sitting at a dinner table with Lou and Becky was a highlight. David Potts, I, I still remember like the first time we met at at the ABD uh, in the lobby of the hotel in California. And just what a nice time we had um, that entire trip. That seems like it was ages ago. So the question I have for you and Meg and BJ and Terry and Vicky and the gaffs is when can we do this again? Cue the music. This is why I need a producer. I would cue the music if I could, but I can't. So I won't. So instead I will cue the music from Dave Rashoni from DJR Music, a little background music to take us out. Uh, thank you guys again. I appreciate you so much. Again, the meet of the month is this weekend. Good luck to anybody walking, running, wogging, jogging, or cheering at the half marathon, the 10K, and the 5K. I will absolutely be cheering on the boardwalk for the half marathon on Sunday. I'm going to try and get to. I've got Something else that might preclude me from getting to uh, the finish line because of the way they're doing it for the 10K. But the meet's on Saturday. I'll be out cheering on Sunday. If you want to come and join me to cheer, it's at the Boardwalk Bakery. It's a win-win, except for the fact that it's really stupid o'clock in the morning. But um, it's a lot of fun. And uh, and and I'm, I'm so proud of everybody who's on the team and who's just out there um, doing what they love. And... Uh, for us, you know, raising money for Make a Wish is uh, is really, oh daylight savings time. Forgot about that. It's gonna totally whack me out this week. As if my body clock wasn't screwy already. Let's um, let's see what we can do to whack it out even further. Listen, I have truly missed you so very much, and it it warms my heart to come back and see that you're still here and you haven't left me and left us and left this family. And I promise, 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 get back on a regular schedule in terms of shows, in terms of live shows. I'll be live from London when I figure out what the time difference is when I'm out there. I've got something else coming up the week after that I'm going solo on that I'm going to be able to share a lot of stuff with you via live Instagram stories and short form videos and things like that. I'll talk to you more about that next week because I don't want you to forget between now and then. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love and appreciate you oh so, so very, very much. So, uh, Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, uh, Konnichiwa, uh, Sayonara. So until next week, see ya. <laughs>